Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. My differences between two art historical period videos are some of the most popular on my channel. So with the school year getting ready to start, I thought it was prime time to introduce another episode. This week, I'll be discussing the differences between the Baroque and Neoclassical periods. So to learn more, keep on watching. Before we dive into the differences, it's important to establish some historical background. The Baroque period occurred from roughly 1600 to 1750. There is some scholarly debate on the origin of the word Baroque. The most common theory is that it stems from the Portuguese word Baroco, or oddly shaped pearl. It is meant to highlight the fact that Baroque art was different and unique, especially when in comparison with other periods. One of the major influences of the Baroque period was the Counter-Reformation. This was the response by the Catholic Church to the Protestant Reformation. The Church commissioned many artists to create awe-inspiring works of religious art. Neoclassical art was the dominant style in Europe from around 1750 to 1805, give or take. The discovery of the previously buried cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum captured the public's imagination and heavily influenced art and culture. In addition, scholarship by Johann Joachim Winkelmann and Grand Tours inspired people to reclaim and reinterpret the ancient past. One of the main focuses of this period was using mythology and history for social commentary. In addition, Napoleon Bonaparte heavily favored this style as it helped him spread his imperial message and link himself with the glory of ancient Rome. The first major difference between these two periods is the use of light and shadow. In the Baroque period, we call this tenebrism. To illustrate it, let's examine Caravaggio's Calling of St. Matthew, dating from around 1599 to 1600. Caravaggio is well known for his extreme use of light and dark. A beam of light literally draws the viewer's eye to the most important part of the work, Christ telling St. Matthew he was to become a disciple. However, the rest of the work is cast in heavy shadows. Mysteriously, the light doesn't emanate from the dirty window in the background of the painting. Instead, it comes from Christ himself. In contrast, we have The Oath of the Harashi by Jacques-Louis David. This work dates from 1784, the height of the neoclassical period. The lighting in this work is far more balanced. There is some contrast employed by the artist for dramatic effect, but it isn't as marked. For example, the light is focused on the men making the solemn oath, while the crying women are placed in the shadows but the use of light is far more realistic and something that we would expect to see. The next major difference between these two styles is the use of emotion. Baroque art is famous for its over-the-top, almost theatrical use of emotion. For example, let's take a look at Apollo and Daphne by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, dating from 1622 to 25. The artist captured this myth through dynamic movement, facial expressions, and highlighting elements of the human form. Look at Daphne's face, she's terrified. She has no desire to be with Apollo, but he won't take no for an answer. She violently pulls away from him as her body turns into a tree. Apollo, on the other hand, looks fierce and determined. His muscles strain as he reaches for the frightened nymph. We can feel both of the figures' emotions as real as if they were our own. On the other hand, the neoclassical period was far more restrained. This work, Psyche Revived by Cupid's Kiss, we also have a mythological moment, but it's more like a snapshot in time. Antonio Canova, the artist, uses delicate lines to show Cupid flying in to wake up his love Psyche, there are no straining muscles or expressive emotions. It's a symbol of love, not necessarily about telling the story. The final difference of this video concerns the common subjects of the period. It's important to note that both periods covered multiple kinds of subjects. These are just the most common. Firstly, during the Baroque period, we see a large focus on religious art. It's unsurprising as many artists were commissioned by the church or religiously minded patrons during the Counter-Reformation. For example, we have Judith Lang Holofernes by Artemis Machantileski. She painted this work around 1620. It features the story of Judith, an Old Testament heroine who slayed the general Holofernes to save her people. Not only is this work spiritual in nature, but it served as an inspiration to women. It shows them that their faith gave them power. In contrast, the neoclassical period was heavily focused on the past, including legends and historical events. It's unsurprising as we know that ancient Rome and Greece were big influences on artistic culture. To illustrate this, let's take a look at Jacques-Louis David's masterpiece, The Death of Socrates. It shows the moment right before the philosopher's execution. He was forced to drink hemlock for his beliefs and teaching style. This was quite appropriate subject for the period around the French Revolution. Neoclassical art was all about mixing the past with the present, showing the continuity of human nature and history. These two styles are fascinating in their own way. It helps us to understand the artistic process across the centuries and what artists deemed important during their lifetimes. Make sure to check out the description box below for even more Baroque and neoclassical content. 